All praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem Amashiach, Yahushai, Ba'ashem, Rahakadash. And those are the names of who the world calls God and Jesus Christ in the Hebrew language. I'd like to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, GMS, and citations to the hopeful like brethren out there pushing the word in sincerity and in truth, risking their lives and their freedom to do so. And of course, to those men, I'd like to say Shalom, Wa Baraki Thumb. Peace and blessings upon you and the Holy Spirit. And right now I have uh, I have right here an interesting article basically going into the significance of gopher wood. Actually, when you look this up on the Blue Letter Bible app and look up the how many times the, uh, gopher wood comes up in the Bible, you'll find out that it only comes up one time. And the only time that it comes up is when the Heavenly Father commanded Noah to build the ark out of gopher wood. And this article right here just prove it shows you the, the the it goes into the coverage of gopher wood. It brings out the points of why the heavenly father told Noah to do this and just it goes into the, the significance of the process of building the ark. All right. It was basically a foreshadowing of, of definite things to come. All right. Like I said, it's an interesting article and I want to read it, grab a couple of precepts, and I hope Whoever may be watching of the hopeful lake, I hope that you may be edified. So the title of this article is the, S the scientific and biblical truth and coverage for gopher wood. And when you look up the word coverage, it basically goes into like heavy points, bring out the points of gopher wood. All right. And it starts off by saying, do I want to read that? Yeah, I want to read that. It says scientific facts can sometimes yield surprising biblical insight. And that's very true because everything that the heavenly father commanded man to do, it was for a reason. All right. It was for a reason. All right. And a lot of the times uh, people find out those reasons later on, especially with, you know, with science nowadays, you'll find out why the heavenly father commanded man to do such things. All right. So it says scientific facts can sometimes yield surprising biblical insight. For example, lignans make hardwood trees hard. All right. It says they are the complex group of organic compounds found in the cell walls of plants that give structural uh, dignity to the plant's overall growth and um, architecture. One type of plant lignin contains sulfur. While the other is sulfur free. So you have two type of lignans of plants, of trees. All right. One is sulfur bearing lignans and the other one is sulfur free lignans. And it says it's the sulfur bearing lignans that form the fundamental structural basis of all hardwood trees used for lumber products. It says the botanical fact cast an interesting theological light on Genesis 6 and 14, where the Most High instructs Noah to build a large ship. The ark allowed him and his family, which was a total of eight people, and the various representatives of the animal kingdom to survive the impending global flood. It says, and repopulate the earth. It says, specifically, Noah is commanded to make yourself an ark of gopher wood. And that way you can find that account in the book of Genesis uh, 6 and 14, where the, where the Lord, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, commanded him to do that. It says, much confusion has been connected to the term gopher wood. It says, no one seems to know exactly what the Hebrew word, uh, which that's the Hebrew word for gopher right there, or uh, really means. This is the only place in the Bible where it's used. Like I said before, when I opened up in the introduction, it's only used one time in the Bible. All right. And that's in uh, Genesis 6 and 14. But it says right here, the King James and the New King James Version wisely, wisely leave the word untranslated. Other Bible translation, other Bible translations have inserted different types of wood, such as cypress. But this is just a spe uh, speculation. It says when we dig, when we dig deeper into the Hebrew word, we begin to find enlightening connections. Gopher is actually a root word of the of golf rith, which is translated seven times in the in the Old Testament as brimstone. Is this correct? Let's find out. 
So I'm going to look up the word brimstone. Brimstone. And let's see its origins. Uh, Genesis 19 and 24 says, The Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire for the Lord from the Lord out of heaven. All right, let's look up this word brimstone in Genesis, the 19th chapter. Tools. Right here, brimstone. Gothrith. All right, that's the Hebrew word for brimstone. Right? Brimstone of ju judgment of the Heavenly Father's breath. Uh, Strong's definition. Uh, probably cypress resin by analogy sulfur as equally inflammable brimstone but look where look where it says right here in the root word et, uh, etymology let's click on that probably from this word what is this word this word is go gopher you see that cypress gopher gopher wood so another meaning of gopher is brimstone just had to look that up you know for myself all right so another another name or another meaning of gopher is brimstone let's continue in the article it says no one seems to know exactly nope shalaki right here when we dig deeper into the hebrew word we begin to find out the lightning connections gopher is actually a root word it's actually a root of the word gopherth, which is translated seven times in the Old Testament as brimstone. That's correct. We just did it. In the context of the Most High's fiery judgment of human wickedness, for example, would be in Genesis 19 and 24. That's the scripture we just read. The Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah. And in Psalms 11 and 6, upon the wicked, he will rain coals, fire and brimstone and a burning wind shall be the portion of their cup. Continue on by saying, uh, t -t 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 skip down just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. Right here. It says, when we put these original biblical terms into context of the organic compound that is found in the structural bases of trees and industrial uh applications of lumber the coincidence is remarkable for all practical purpose most high is speaking a scientific truth to noah and telling him to use a form of plant material with sulfur bearing lignin furthermore since the word wood tree or timber is gopher wood in the plural form in hebrew this fits well with the fact that wooden ships are typically built of many types of hardwood. Some wood works well for the ship's hull, while others are used for support structures, deep planking, or other features. Yet all would, yet all would be sulfur-bearing uh, tree kinds. Given the great depth of the Most High's wisdom and structure and Scripture, the scientific truth of sulfur-bearing lignified plants tissues uh, yields profound insight into his eternal purposes and judgment and redemption it says noah is also told in genesis 6 and 14 to cover the ark inside and out with pitch let's grab that scripture genesis uh six and uh 14 genesis 6 and 14 and it reads it says, make thee an ark of gopher wood, rooms that rooms shalt thou make in the ark, and, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. Let's look up that word pitch right quick. The word pitch comes from the Hebrew word kapar. Which means a price of a life, a ransom, bribe, uh, asphalt, pitch, um, ransom, a redemption. That's what the word pitch means. 
Let's look up the root word. To cover, purge, make an atonement, reconciliation, cover over with pitch. Remember those definitions. It says, plant tissue yields profound insight into his internal purposes, into judgment and redemption. Noah's told in Genesis 6 and 14 to cover the ark inside and out with pitch. The word cover in the Hebrew word or uh, kapar, uh, kapar, which we just read, which literally means to cover by extension means to insulate or to atone for by covering. This word is wise is widely used in the Masonic law to describe the process of the high priest making atonement for the sins of the people. All right. That's what the word cover means. So gathering the information that we just read so far, the what the Heavenly Father commanded Noah to do of building the ark, the, the process of it, it was a foreshadowing of things to come. And the foreshadowing that it was talking about is the second death, where the Lord is going to destroy various parts of the earth by fire. And he's letting you know the only way to get saved out of that harsh judgment for the wicked is an atonement for your sins. And who was the atonement? Okay. It was who the world calls Jesus Christ. Hamashiach Yahweh Hamashiach Yahweh Let's look it up. Um, purge sins. I'm pretty sure there's a scripture that that says that. Uh, no, I believe it's reconciliation. Let's look up that word. Yep. Hebrews, the second chapter, verse 17. Wherefore, in all things, it behooved him to make, to be made like unto his brother. Because Yahweh Shai, he was made like to his brother. He was, a, he was an Israelite of the tribe of Judah. All right. He was an Israelite. So he was made like unto his brother that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest. Yahweh Shai was a high priest and a high priest every year they was commanded to make an atonement. Atonement basically means to purge or cleanse you of your sins. And Yahweh Shai did that when he died on the cross. It says in things pertaining to the Most High to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. And that was Yahweh Shai. You see, it says for in himself have suffered being tempted. He is he is able to succor them that are tempted, are tempted. All right. Because Yahweh Shai was tempted and he endured that temp uh, temptation and overcame it. He can now help us go through our temptation and overcome it as well. You see that? The, uh, the scriptures is, 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 is manifold wisdom in it. All right. It's manifold wisdom inside the scriptures, man. Let's continue in the article. And it says, this word is wide, widely used in the Masonic law to describe the process of the high priest making atonement for the sins of the people, such as uh, Yah Kampar, which is the day of atonement. An example would be Exodus 30 and 10. And it says Aaron shall make an atonement, which Aaron, he was a high priest, a, a, a Levite, a Levite high priest. And it says, and Aaron shall make an atonement upon the altar horns once a year for the blood of the sin offering of atonement. It says a related and similar word used to pitch or kapar most often describes the covering payment of a ransom for one's life or that an entire village. It says, in other words, we have we have the symbolic act of a high priest making atonement for the sins of the people, insulating and protecting them from judgment. You see that? So there was a hidden message in the building process of Noah's Ark. And the hidden message is that the Lord was going to send a fiery judgment in the, fu in, the, in the future in order to get saved out of that fiery judgment. There was going to have to be an atonement. You was going to have to believe in that person that did that atonement 
and that covered you and made ransom for you. Okay. By the way, by the by and high priest, Yahweh Shah is is a high priest. He's a high priest in the heavens. Okay. It mentions that in the book of Hebrews. And it says, in very and very materials used in the construction of the ark not only convey protection from the judgment of the floodwaters, but a deeper layer, multi multifold wisdom, but a deeper layer of meaning and the protection against a sulfur uh, a sulfurous fiery judgment in well they going off in the afterlife the the second death is not something that's going to happen in the afterlife hell is a is a fable it's a it's a uh, cunningly devised fable that was made up by the roman catholic church All right the second death that's going to come in the near future is where the lord is going to destroy various parts of the earth by the way of thermal nuclear fire in the midst of third in the midst of this third world war which is going to happen in the near future that's the fiery judgment which is to come all right that's i think i believe that's the only part where they went off in this article besides that is very good information in this article and it says, the deeper we dig into the treasure chest of scripture, the more nuggets of truth we uncover, practically biblical truth and profound examples of judgment and redemption can be found throughout Genesis. Both Ark, both the Ark and Noah serve as a foreshadowing types of Yahweh Shai, the anointed, the Messiah, and much has been written about, about them in this respect. Okay, that was pretty much the end of the article. Now, I want to just grab one more scripture because, I, you know, I'm just finding this out. This article, you know, it shocked me, you know, and it's very true what the scripture says right here in the book of Luke. All right. Because Yahweh Shai was written about in the book of Genesis all the way to the end, to the book of Revelation. He, whether it doesn't even have to mention his name, his spirit is there. And it proves it right here in the book of Luke 24 and 44. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which was written in the law of Moses. The law of Moses is going into what? The first five books of the Bible. All that was written by Moses. All right. Which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. All right. So Yahweh Shai is there from the from the beginning of the book to all the way in the end. It was written concerning him. All right. Noah's Ark is a foreshadowing of things to come. All right. Which is Hamashiach Yahushai. So I just thought that was an interesting article. I wanted to share it with you brothers. And uh, I truly hope you brothers out there was edified. All right. So with that, uh, I'd like to give all praises to Yahweh. By Hashem Hamashiach Yahushai. By Hashem Rahakadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders who rate millstones, GMS. Now, shalom to the left. Until next time, I say shalom.